Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. Welcome to Projections, our show about virtual reality and augmented reality. Now viewers, you may know that Jeremy and I were at Oculus Connect for not too long ago. About a week ago, yep, Oculus's annual event where we get together, we see all the latest games and the latest hardware. Yeah, and we talked a little about that hardware uh, last week, but this week we want to start talking about some of the games we actually got to play. Things that were maybe announced there uh, mm -hmm. that may be coming out in the near future or far future for the Rift platform. Uh, so over the next coming weeks, we'll be rolling out some of these interviews we did with developers. But let's start off with uh, the first game we played, which is Windlands 2. Mm -hmm. And uh, their uh, Windlands 2 sequel to a very popular uh, first-gen VR game. In fact, the first Windlands game was, was released even before uh, touch controllers were released. It's an uh, adventure game uh, with the big, big mechanic being a swinging mechanic. You're swinging through like these jungles, uh, previously using look gaze based targeting. And Originally, yeah, on the developer kits, it actually came out as one of the early you know demos that you could try, mm -hmm. and it was gamepad based. Yes. So like it was gaze around and then press a button and you'd swing your your uh, you know your your rope out there and you'd swing across the land. Um, I found that early version to be a little bit nauseating. Yeah, and it was a huge experimentation in locomotion because it wasn't teleporting. It was fast movement, they had mm -hmm. to calibrate how much acceleration you get, but you have the sense that there is a rope tethering you to whatever target you're hitting, so that gives you some line of comfort. But once the touch controllers, once motion controllers came out, um, you could actually aim your controller and grapple totally onto different objects. So Windlands 2 takes that one step further, and to introduce you to the game, we chatted with one of the developers about what was new. Nick, it's great to see you here at Oculus Connect 4. Uh, you guys are announcing Windlands 2. So a lot of people may remember Windlands from the uh, first, all the way back to DK1. Yeah. Uh, tell me what's different about 2, um, and uh, how, how, what have you learned? So yeah, we were really pleased with how everyone took to the first game. I mean, it seemed to get, it kind of blew us away how, how kind of positive everyone was. I mean, the game had been around in one form or another for a long time. But uh, once it came out and, yeah, we were able to get out to, to PlayStation and everywhere and we were just blown away. So we kind of, once we, we started thinking about, well, we obviously want to do more. There's no reason not to. What would people really like to see? And, um, you know, in the new game, we, we were really, we, multiplayer was the thing that we thought, if we could do that, if we, if we could make that work where multiple people can swing around, that would be amazing. And I think, you know, because in the original game, people would do speed challenges and, and uh, uh, it was quite a, a, a well-streamed game. There was a lot of it going on. So having people be able to go in there together and do that together, that seemed like the natural fit for the game. Uh, but then we also wanted to push other things. We had a really rudimentary story going on the first one, so we wanted to push that harder. We've got NPCs uh, with missions. We're going to get them voiced and uh, have a whole story going on and exploration of the, uh, the world and the island, and that'll all expand. And then finally, we, we wanted to add in combat, so you versus great big robots in sort of a co-op thing. And you can play the whole game as sort of a co-op experience or on your own, and the game sort of scales as to where that level is. And you're designing for two-player, multiplayer, a co-op, essentially, yeah. primarily. Well, is there a competitive aspect as well? Well, we're going to it's up to four people. Ah, great. And um, we, we're looking at other options. I mean, there's loads of opportunity to have, you know, things like time trials or, or any, any number of, you know, deathmatch or any kind of thing. So we're looking at as many of those things as we can. But at the moment, we're kind of concentrating on the whole co-op single player type experience. The core mechanic of the game is the swinging. It's really, when it first came out, one of the most innovative movement locomotion mechanics that works so well with track controllers. Mm. How has that been refined? Um, are you pushing more toward, now that your user base is very comfortable in it, yeah. giving them more freedom for movement, or are you trying to make it as comfortable for a wide range of users? I'm not sure that's a design yeah. decision. Yet yeah, kind of both. So the original was actually made with, without motion controllers in mind. It was a, a gamepad and you'd look where you want to shoot. But as soon as those controls came available, we, we immediately went across to them. And it was surprising how, how that easily that, that transferred across. But since we come to this game from the ground up, we, we started making it with, with the controls from the ground up. So it's controller only this time. And it's, it was basically a mix of refining that to make it give people more control and make that nicer and more comfortable. But we also have like loads of comfort options. So any number of different control schemes, different comfort options in terms of turning. We've added things like vignetting and, and other comfort things like that. So really it's, yeah, it's any and all those things. Try to give people as much control. Um, there's like a number of different advanced options if you want to control it in different ways, but also 
as many comfort options as possible because it's quite it could be quite uncomfortable for some people if they if they hit it really hard and they're not used to it so giving people those options is good i always tell people this is like your dream web slinging spider-man mm. style game you always want this what you imagine is very graceful progression it's almost yeah. very poetic in the way you move um how much of that is in like the automatic retraction of your grappling how much do you how, the speed the acceleration what are these things that you're tuning to make it feel like it's not just about moving fast but yeah. it's about having a very fluid movement Fluidity is important. I think after a while people get, get a kind of a, a game sense of just, just what that momentum is. There are things like retraction and, and additional controls that you can get into. The main thing is though, just in the level design, we've just tried to make sure it's got that sweet spot between freedom so people can go in loads of different directions and do lots of different things and, and have a lot of different routes. It's quite, once we started getting into figuring out that design, it's quite complicated trying to figure out, because you don't want just one, one route. You want lots of different options, but at the same time still enabling that nice kind of chaining together action. It's very satisfying when you can get that going and just letting people do that as well. It's almost very much like a bionic commando-like too yeah. in terms of the classic game. Yeah, yeah. In that game, the you know your rope can also be rigid and you yeah. can st have it push. Is that also the case here yeah, where you can push there's, against? There's that kind of um, thing. There's always a bit of retraction, a bit of spring to it. Um, there's not like a rigidity as such, but there's certainly, in the way we're doing it, a number of different options that you can enable and explore. There's like a whole bunch of menu options you can go through and just refine it for what works for you. You mentioned level design a little bit. Uh, visually, it reminds me a lot of the first Wind Lens, kind mm. of very picturesque nature. Are you experimenting with other templates, other models of environments that you'd want to grapple around? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the game is set in, it's still in like a post-apocalyptic type world that's been destroyed and, and then now in the future you're, you're one of these guardians who's helping rebuild the world and these machines still exist and are kind of causing trouble and you've you got to take them out. So there's a lot of shattered you know, islands and places but also in terms of the nature of the world we've got this jungle that you start off in and it goes into other more kind of desert lands and, and you know the volcano at one place and we, we're building out trying to add some variety and there's a whole village um, where all the NPCs are sort of mostly centered around that kind of thing so we're trying to get a lot of variety we've got a, a, a kind of a cartoony sort of direction we pushed it in um, with a lot of few inspirations, you know, our, our concept artists uh, are awesome. Um, from like one, one of the guys from DreamWorks who sort of came across, and yeah, they've done a fantastic job. And then finally, mechanically introducing weapons, the bow and arrow is what we use. Is that going to be the only weapon in the game, or are there more weapons? And how does that affect yeah. the swinging mechanic when you're doing that? And then you're also changing into using weapons, you know, mid air. Yeah. So we we the bow and arrow is the, the primary. Uh, I guess aggressive mechanic that we have. We're looking at there are other mechanics come to the game. We have a, a, a further mechanics, but they're not really. It's not like we're going to give people machine guns or or other varieties of weapons. And those are things that we're we're currently building in. Uh, but you can you can swing and shoot the arrow. You can. What's fun to do is like swing, be flying through the air, and have that sort of Zelda, you know, offload a load of arrows. Or you can just kind of hold on and at the same time fire. Arrows. So there's lots of ways to kind of, especially when this, this big spider bot thing is stomping around, you want to try and find the, the way to either hide or swing or land on top of things and just try and figure out the best way to tackle those things. It becomes almost like a puzzle, an environmental puzzle in that sense. And when you add up to four players, mm -hmm. and as you're playtesting and designing it, how are four people working together, swinging and firing at the same yeah. time? And does the difficulty scale up to really require cooperation? Yeah, I mean, the, the difficulty absolutely scales to how many people are playing, and that's that's down to things like how many sh hits the shield takes or how aggressive the spider is mm. and things like that. And we'll be experimenting and, and tuning that as you go through to make sure it's it's kind of fair and fun. Awesome. Thank you so much for chatting with me, Nick. I can't wait to play the full game. Thank you very much, Norm. All right, so uh, the big feature is, of course, mm -hmm. multiplayer, a social experience. They haven't decided how many players they're going to allow, but it looks like it, from their demos, it's been at least four that they've got working mm -hmm. in-house. Uh, we tried just two players, and, and it's a ton of fun. Even two players, ton of fun. I think it speaks to the testament of how polished this locomotion mechanic is. And that, Swing and grappling. I got to tell you, after experiencing the early DK version of this game, I didn't go back and try the touch version just mm. because I was put off by the gamepad controls. It didn't work for me, uh, you know, nauseating-wise. Uh, but this, having played Windlands 2, I want to go back and play Windlands 1 with touch now because it feels great. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was shocked. 
you, you aim your, your controller out and you aim, you know, basically at these shapes. I think everything green. It's you, color coded. You can, you can swing your, your rope out and latch onto. And then it's a swinging mechanic, which you think, no way that's going to work. I Everyone's going to throw up. I didn't feel nausea at all. Right, right. I mean, they could have done the grappling motion in a lot of ways. It right. doesn't look like the rope itself has droopy physics. Like, mm -hmm. you're not actually, the rope doesn't curve down. It's always like one straight rope. Uh, but they could have done it where once you grapple on, you're pulled toward immediately, and, and, and you are pulled toward. Right. But they actually give you time to, to swing, so you have to choose when you launch your grapple. It is interesting that way. It is more of a Spider-Man than, you know, like the old style Quake grappling hook. Right, right. And I think, you know, no one wants to say this is your Spider-Man game, but basically it's the best thing we've come close to a web-slinging game. Not only do you want to choose when, you can't even reach some things. Right. So th there is timing involved in making, like you, sometimes you're swinging, letting go, letting yourself fly through the air, and then just at the last minute, you know, swinging it again with and your other hand. Just like you would imagine Spider-Man doing, once you hit a target and you're swinging, you can actually pull right. and you can propel yourself. So you get some, some tension in that rope. Um, you know, I, I mentioned Bionic Commando when I was chatting with them, and that was another game that made me think of Bionic Commando hitting. You know, the, the rope itself almost becomes like a, a rod, like yeah. a rigid thing. But and, and in Windlands, you can't shoot the ground and make it like a pole to, to vault over things. Mm -hmm. But that would be an interesting thing for them to do. Um, it really felt graceful. Yeah, like um, you, it, 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 and not terribly easy. Like yeah. it, it's like it's one of those things where it's perfect design. It, it's it's easy to understand, hard to master. And it rewards practice, it rewards timing. Yeah. And when you have two players, three players, or four players, then there's some competitive aspect. You can watch, it's fun to watch you or you're watching me swinging, and I can see what are the things that you're grappling at and what you're targeting, mm -hmm. and I can choose to go that way, or I can choose to maybe try to swing further and make it almost like a race. There's diverging paths, Absolutely. so you, you figure out which is the best way to go. Uh, but the other new thing that they added to this, besides multiplayer, are there are these new weapons. It's combat-based. Right. Like you're, you're going through a single-player campaign, and the weapon they showed uh, is a bow and arrow. So, Which we know works in VR. Totally works in VR. Uh, but combining a swinging mechanic with the bow and arrow mechanic, mm -hmm. it just felt like Zelda. I want more of that. You I know, want I, so much I more. want maybe a bullet time. I want to be in the air firing my arrow more than I was. Like, that is so satisfying. You get to the end of their demo level and there's a big spider creature. It has all these shields around the outside. You have to take out the shields and then you take out the spider creature. It's a mechanical spider. Mm -hmm. um, and he nails you. If he runs at you, you're pretty much dead. So yeah. you have to stay off the ground. You can jump, but the best way to do that is to grapple up and fly through the air. And it's so fun to get the timing down where you're flying through the air on an arc. You're then leading your, you know, your opponent with the, with the bow and arrow, firing and hitting one of those shields. That's, I mean, to actually have done, to figure out that, that timing and nail it, ton of fun. Not easy. And I no. wouldn't be surprised. One of my recommendations to them is maybe give you a little bit of an auto aim or something to help you. Like you mentioned auto bullet aim. time. Like bullet time works in a game like Zelda because it's single player. Right. Like maybe you can do multiplayer bullet time and that would make it easy. But if you're you know, vaulting through the air, swinging, mm -hmm. and you have high motion in one trajectory, one vector, your head is looking at another vector, and you're firing a third vector for mm -hmm. your bow and arrow, it's not easy to hit yeah. that target. Maybe not an auto aim, but like a targeting computer. Something, you know, yeah. Shoot over here. Um, but anyway, a ton of fun. Um, they have very little of this game that they've shown. It almost feels like it's really early in development. Yep. So we have a ways to wait, but uh, you know, hats off to these guys for following through on this really cool idea. Absolutely. Another game we played at Oculus Connect is from Ubisoft, and it's called Space Junkie. Yeah, they kind of teased this one at E3. Uh, they, there were images shown of it, but nothing more. And what they've advertised this is a, a deathmatch game that's supposed to be the equivalent of maybe like Quake or Unreal Tournament mm -hmm. to VR. Now, what, we were unable to capture direct footage of our game time with this, and we're, we're ready to share that yet, but we did chat with the developers about their concept, so let's jump to that before we share our impressions. Adrian, it's great to meet you here at Oculus Connect. You guys are showing off Space Chunkies playable for the first time. Give me a quick overview of what the game is and, um, and, and why you guys are excited about it. Well, basically, it's a jetpack fueled shooter in microgravity. Uh, I think, I guess, uh, it's fast paced. 
think sort of Quake 3 meets Rocket League uh, in VR. Uh, so that's kind of how we're, we're, we're positioning it. Um, it's fast, it's furious. You have the use of your hands for the first time. So that means two guns, two directions at any time. You're in the spherical battlefield. So whether you look up, down, left, right, action comes from any side. And so it's a pretty open environment, a large volume for four players to fly around in. You're encouraging six degrees of movement, not just your standard horizontal, horizontal plane. plane. Yeah. Exactly. So how did you go always approach the movement in this? It's a game where your bodies are presented, but you're encouraging people to play while it's seated. Yeah, um, uh, what we found straight away is obviously you're, you're in microgravity, so you're floating around, you've got a jetpack strapped to your butt. Um, so we really focus on the movement in terms of your head as an input, so where you look is where you go. So we're, we're encouraging you to flow and fly, okay? So you dodge and weave and you go up and down. Um, there's no reason to be stood up. Uh, people set up, whether, whether they're at home or in the office or whatever, often on PCers, it's not necessarily room scale. Um, we wanted to just give something that was quite accessible. Uh, we make video games where people are sat down, uh, and there's no reason why we can't make a VR experience where you sit down. Um, I think it's important for us as well and for the player to understand that they can feel locked in, comfortable, and they can play around in a session without running around or being crazy, and they can have that confined environment. In terms of comfort, you guys are creating a little bit of a yetting with a mask that yeah. your player is wearing. That's so that when you're move, doing mo all this lateral movement, you're still comfortable. Uh, do you have acceleration? Is it different between horizontal movement, rotation, and, and vertical uh, we, movement? Uh, the, the way we look at that sort of uh, comfort, uh, we use, it's percentages. Every little percentage is important. Uh, so whether it's your field of view, uh, whether it's the anchoring or your mask, whether it's your input, where you look is where you go. Uh, whether it's a comfort rotation. We do have a full uh, swing rotation as well. Uh, even having your hands in front of you because you fly around and you shoot, all those elements and having your full body presence also helps in terms of comfort. So it's, it's every little bit counts. And in terms of the play space, because it is a large volume, because there are structures yeah. in the microgravity, whether it looks like space stations, yeah. uh, where's your optimal combat? Is it close quarters combat? When we were playing, we saw a lot of people getting real close using a sword, but are you also encouraging a mix of that and also sniping from afar? What, what, what's the dynamic when it comes to distance? Well, every, every map has its sort of theme for that. Um, so typically our maps are created in VR. One of the big advances we can actually create in full 3D and just jump in and look at angles. We're an angle game, actually, to be honest. It's, uh, you know, you're covered to shoot, your things like that. But it depends on the maps. We also give a lot of freedom. So you played Organic Belt, I believe, and that's a very open map. So that's really benefiting sort of long range weapons like the pulse rifle. Uh, or the uh, machine gun, the rail gun, and stuff like that. Uh, then we have close, more close quarter stuff, which is in absolute zero, uh, and that's corridors and stuff like that. So it's a little bit more sneaky and tactic. You're describing it as an angle game. Is a lot of it hiding and peeking out and situational awareness rather yeah. than like really constant movement? Uh, it's, when I say angle, movement is, uh, is the core. Navigation is the core. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's how do you... Uh, uh, predict your trajectories of your enemies or your and as you're flying through sort of asteroid belts and stuff like that how do you anticipate that he's going off to the left because he's boosting and then you fly in behind and sort of cord him off and cut him off uh, spotting them before they spot you right. using the right weapons now, yeah. in terms of weapons uh, give me a, a description of like how, how many weapons are there what are the types of weapons I notice things are like that you're analog to quake you know your rocket launcher your, your yeah. blaster railgun like how did you approach that design? Uh, for us, it's very much, we're quite an older team. So we've been around, we grew up on Quake and things like that. Uh, and we wanted to do something fun. We didn't want to do a military shooter. We didn't want to do sort of military weapons or too realistic. So that's why we've got a worm gun. So we call it the mama worm. And she spits out a worm on your face and you have to pull it off your mask. Uh, that's why I have a bio gun, which is like a, the liquidator, which is the green one when you <coughs> and you spray out goo. Uh, we also have the pulse rifle, which is more like a sniper rifle. One of the things to understand with weapon design in VR, which a lot of people don't understand is, um, normally your timing, so that rock, paper, scissors stuff, it happens as a direct result of the animation or the timing of the animation. Okay, now you don't have that. You don't have that slower reload or the scope of a, a, of a sniper gun traditionally, which doesn't allow you to shoot close quarter combat and so on. It's harder, you know, because your rest mm -hmm. goes, goes up. And that's why our, our weapons are designed to have those different functionalities. So that's why we have two-handed weapons, which is a little bit harder to aim, which, is, which, does, which slows down your navigation and shooting at the same time. I, mean, I never thought of that way. When you're playing a flat screen shooter, the animations built into the gun yeah. are how you handicap power and balance range and power, but here, you're building, building into the physicality of the gun. Now, in terms of the actual things, like you talked about pulling things off your face, the guns I noticed have attachments to them. Mm -hmm. Like, how, how much body awareness do you want 
uh, in this game because I, I like the idea that you can untether a gun or have it tethered yeah. to you. Yeah, I think uh, full body IK is massive for us. We think we've done a, a, an exceptional job in full body IK in terms of how, uh, how, how it works and the position of, of your body in terms of the environment. We're still, it's, we're still adjusting it constantly. It's something that's evolving, evolving. But having your head, shoulders, knees and toes and having your arms, it changes everything. Okay, you can dab, I guess, you know what I mean? That you can dance, you can, but just seeing someone else have their, like waving at you with that and not just floating stuff, it's different. It gives that sense of presence that it's really important for us. And then that interaction, so we have a lot of hand gestures, so I don't know if you showed you the sort of the hearts and, and the communication. Those are all tools of communication within the game and within VR, which is, never been done before. You have two hands. Any consideration of employing those gestures and those poses for combat or for, for power-ups? Yeah, we're, we're probably gonna give you kits of gestures, different gestures for different, you know, if you, you'll win uh, different gestures as you rank up and stuff mm. like that. Uh, because you, you can only do a certain, we are actually wanted to do full sign language. We actually tried it at one point and it's very complicated. It's too, it's too much because you don't have the, the use of the hands. Um, but then we just started doing things that were fun, so. And then, um, because you're in zero G, you know, orientation, everyone's pointed up. Is there going to be ability for people to turn on rotation and actually get upside down? No, 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 no. We're that we're micro, we're we're jetpacks first. Uh, one of the things that we did, we did actually do that in the beginning. We turned the world. Uh, it comes. It, it adds a lot of complications. Uh, it's it can be very uncomfortable very quickly. Uh, you basically, you grab the world and you turn it, and it's very disorientating for the player. Uh, we want to privilege the fun first and the comfort first, uh, rather than the idea that I want to be in the ISS. Um, it's not that's not what we're doing. We're not doing a simulation. Um, we did try it. one of the one of the interesting story of the LD, the level designers because we do it in VR anyway. Uh, we turned the map once, like at like 45 degrees, and we all played and we all started walking around like that. So <laughs> we were like, whoa, it's weird. Um, so we have. We've tried stuff like that, but that's why we think it's it's about that freedom of navigation. It's more of a navig navigation game than uh, a space simulation. Got it. Well, thank you so much for cool. chatting with me, Adrian, and I can't wait to play the game. Cool, man. I was expecting an Echo Arena style, uh, you know, equivalent kind of experience um, because zero G combat. Uh, not that Echo Arena is combat, but you, that same kind of idea where there's an arena of people. Um, it's nothing like that. No. Um, so you are you're wearing a jetpack. So propulsion, um, you know, alone, uh, there it seems to be some sense of uh, resistance. So if you let go of your jetpack, you actually do slow down. Mm -hmm. and you come to a stop. So it's not just like infinite, you know, momentum in any direction. Right. Conservation momentum is exactly. cheated a little bit. Um, you're not grabbing onto walls or anything like that. Uh, you're you're navigating through these spaces, and they have the multiple arenas. This is all multiplayer combat. There's no like single player, you know, campaign or anything like that. And um, the one that we played in was a big outdoor space, yeah. um, which they said they did because uh, indoor spaces can be a little more advanced in terms of like the demands on on your sensibilities um, in, in terms of you know lending comfort. The comfort. Um, so the outdoor spaces they find are, are more people are more adept to, to, to use them. And you know we only did like a four player match, and one of the fears I had was if one you're trying to grapple with. The locomotion, the, yep. this jetpack, you can move in, in actual lateral movements up, down, left, right, and you turn, um, and you're looking for your opponents, and it's a pretty big area. It's much bigger than like the Echo Arena play area. And so if you saw someone far away, you have to one, navigate to them, but then you're, there's a lot of open space, mm -hmm. and so how much fun is that just to be shooting at each other in that giant open space? Well, the space we had, it had open space, but mm -hmm. then there were also these corridors on the side. There was a lot of uh, debris and a big, uh, I think a space station or some kind of asteroid in the center that we could you know, hide behind. Yeah, it made me feel, it reminded me a little bit of, um, of Eve Valkyrie, but hmm. instead of being in a spaceship, you're in a space suit. Right. Eve Valkyrie in space suits. Uh, but the big thing is the weapons. A lot like, of weapons. This is where it really feels like it could be like a Quake or Unreal Tournament. Right. They really designed the weapons to yep. almost mimic what you remember from those games. Like there's a railgun, there's a, a really fast uh, plasma launcher, there's grenades you can toss, there's mm -hmm. a, um, a melee, a lightsaber. That's right. Uh, and and two-handed weapons, two-handed shotguns. They really encourage you to, to manipulate the weapons and you can grab weapons, grab respawns. Uh, really cool mechanic. The weapons are actually tethered to your body. This is cool, so that if you let go of your weapon, it sort of zip ties back to your to your hip. But if you want, you can detach it, like you with your other hand. You physically rip the cable out. Now you can throw it to a, to a you know somebody's on your team if you're playing a team game. Right. Or if some of the weapons run out of ammo, they become a grenade. Yeah. And then you rip it out. It starts to tick down, and then you dip dip dip. You you know you charge it and then throw it. 
explodes. It really makes that weapon feel like part of your, your body. Like it, you're aware of it more of a thing you have to manage yeah. as opposed to just something that disappears. A lot of VR games, weapons just, once you let go of them, they vanish, they respawn, you can pick them up. Here you actually have to, it's a physical object. Mm -hmm. There's um, also a shield, Yes. right? So you can activate that. Uh, I only use it on my left hand. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's movable, but it's, it's very cool. It's one of, I mean, shields in VR, they, they really work. And most of the ones that we've seen, you know, whether it's Space Pirate Trainer or um, uh, what's the, the wizard game where you're casting spells, mm -hmm. um, they, they all unspoken. seem- Yeah, unspoken. This whole, they seem holographic. Yeah. And that lends itself to VR because you don't know how much weight that's supposed to have. Right. So I, I love that people are, are adopting that aesthetic. Um, so you hold that up and it, it does a great job of protecting you, you know, in that wherever you're aiming it. Now something that's worth mentioning is that this game is played ideally seated. At least that's what they've designed. Isn't that interesting? For. That's weird because your character doesn't look like it's seat, seated. Like right. Legs are dangling. Right. But maybe for comfort, maybe for one reason or another, they want people to lie, lean back mm -hmm. on their couches and play this while seated. I think you could play it standing up. I, I wonder, because it does have snap rotation, I wonder uh, if, if it would be an advantage to play standing up, because you'd be able to turn around faster. Right, right. Um, and even though the, the map they showed us was uh, this larger outdoor, outdoor space combined with indoor space, they said that the more interesting games, the games are going to feel more like deathmatch games, mm -hmm. are going to be indoor based. Like you're going to be leading around corners, throwing grenades. Like you, if you're going to feel more confined, feel like you actually have to take the space into consideration and moving around rather than just floating and seeing someone in the distance. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the experience. I, I had a really good time in it. I think people are going to dig it. It's basically, you know, zero G, you know, combat arena. What are, what are your hopes and fears? What, what, what would you want to make it a, a compelling thing? Communication? Is it? Is this... I think it comes down to, to map design, you know, mm. you, and learning those maps. What, yeah. Even in our short experience, and this is the wonderful thing about VR, I felt the same way with Windlands too, is that there are very clear ways that I'm a bad player right now. You know, if you look at modern day, you know, um, games, uh, particularly like platformers, like Cuphead or even like a Super Meat Boy kind of thing, it's all about how fast are these games and how, how great is your timing? Like they've evolved beyond just learning basic platformer mechanics into like, you have to just be a super, you know, adept player in, with your timing in order to achieve good scores. It's easy to learn, with, difficult to master. With VR, I think there's just so much space for just learning basic mechanics. Right. How, do you, how do you navigate in zero G and aim your weapon and you know, where are you holding your shield? And in both of these games we talked about, you know, they actually constrain some of the physics so you can't do things like flip upside down. Right. right? They're never gonna have one person upside down and because that's just gonna be too disorienting, the roll mechanic is not there. In Windlands, you're always a lateral character standing up, it's always lateral motion, you're never spinning or tumbling. Right. And that's, that's gonna be essential for comfort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I love the mechanic and moving in both these games um, and I'm, I'm excited for them to come out. They'll both be out, uh, I think, next year on uh, the Rift platform and we'll have more in the future from our visit to Oculus Connect 4. Real, real quick, did they mention anything about game modes in uh, Space uh, Junkies? I don't think so. Do you remember? Because so. that, that would be a big thing too, you know? Yeah. I mean, the game modes seem to have evolved a long way from the standard Deathmatch, which is what we played. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. all right, I love Deathmatch, I hope yep. that's in there. But I also hope that there are, you know, other things like maybe Capture the Flag or even, uh, you know, um, Control Point kind of things. Right. Um, so yeah. hoping for those kind of modes. Mining cart, moving, protecting the, yeah. the hostage or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah, well, let the developers know. They're out there, and I'm sure they're listening. All right, we'll see you next time.